Excellent. So uh, is, is my mic working? All right, great. Thanks. Uh, so I'm here at an altcoin conversation to talk about why Bitcoin uh, should be the winner. So uh, please forgive me for uh, my hubris. Uh, but you know, when I look at Bitcoin, what I look at is not the currency, but the technology underlying it. You know, the thing that made Bitcoin so fundamental was this, this idea called the blockchain and all of the ways that you can apply the blockchain to different problems. And, you know, currency is the first application of this idea of blockchain, but it's not the last. And when we look at what it's being used for, frankly, I don't see another way to implement a, the idea of a currency onto a blockchain better than the way that Bitcoin has done it, simply by virtue of where it's at right now, in terms of how mature this, the ecosystem is, in terms of just how much of a mind share it has. You know, when I look at altcoins and the ones to which I, I, I think are, are kind of iffy on whether or not they have a value proposition, I'm, I'm thinking about the ones to whom are just parameter tweaks on the underlying code of Bitcoin, the ones to whom they, they look at, you know, distribution models and say that's the key innovation that I want to be the basis of an entire coin. And when I look at something, I like to say, well, what's, is there anything fundamental to this that changes the discussion? Is there anything to this that, that is a different narrative or has a different scope? And when we look at most altcoins of the 300 that exist, what we're really, really looking at is something that takes this magnificent idea of the blockchain and applies it in almost exactly the same way that Bitcoin does and does it with just a different distribution model. So when I look at those things, I really don't see the market need. I, I don't see the ability to capture hearts and minds in the same way that Bitcoin does because we already have a system that works. It's called Bitcoin. And the way that markets work and the way that network effects work, you can't just be better than something. You have to be massively better than the legacy system to supplant it. Bitcoin was able to do that against the banks because it's 60-year-old newer technology to the current you know, swift, shitty system that we have. But when it comes to altcoins versus altcoins, and in this instance, I'm even considering Bitcoin an altcoin, I don't see how just a distribution model tweak is enough to be able to say this is something that could supplant or be superior to Bitcoin. Now, when, when, I, when I think of innovative altcoins, I'm looking at something like Namecoin. I'm looking at systems to which apply this idea of the blockchain in ways to which don't even necessarily involve the currency aspect to it. So one of the things that I like the most is BitMessage, because that involves, that's by the way, for communications. There isn't even a monetary value associated with it. It doesn't even have a coin. But it uses this idea of a blockchain for a system that you know, didn't even work before. If we look at the upcoming system with StoreJ, which allows you to, on top of MasterCoin, uh, use a proof of uh, hard drive space, essentially, where you're able to commoditize your hard drive space and sell that as, a, as essentially a service on the blockchain. Those, I think, are fantastic things. But the, the thing that I look at with uh, altcoins is, again, you know, what's the fundamental change here? Is it, is it something um, just you know, easy to do and small, or is it something that really changes the discussion of what can be done with crypto? And, and that's sort of where I'm coming at with this. All right, thanks, John. Um, all right, so I, I'm hoping to have a uh, pretty friendly space here, seeing as how it's a cryptocurrency convention. Um, I thought there were a number of fantastic presentations today. Uh, really just gets me excited about all the innovation that's been going on and the technological development uh, across the cryptocurrency space as a whole. Um, I think, to be completely honest, I came from a position where uh, I actually was pretty negative about the whole idea of all of the altcoins at first. Um, I think the way that a lot of people from the uh, financial community first encounter them, they do worry about it being a, a pump and dump scheme. They worry about uh, the, the, them not providing the, uh, enough of an innovation over uh, Bitcoin and the technology that was introduced. But as I've gotten to know it over the last six to nine months, what I've really seen is that uh, it's very rare that the first technology that catches hold is the one that that wins out. It's not, uh, you know, people could make the argument that Bitcoin has succeeded, but really something that's been around for five years and, and barely caught the attention of, of the nation, let alone uh, the world, ha has succeeded. And, you know, there's a ton of innovation still being done. I think um, uh, from some of the presentations today, the, the industry specific coins, such as Potcoin and Zenith coin, uh, movement based coins, such as Permacredit, uh, and some of the decentralized applications like. Mastercoin and BitShares, um, that's really what, what excites me over the next five years um, in terms of the development going forward. You know, I, I look at it as Bitcoin has had a 
tremendous run. It's been an absolute uh, phenomenon over the last five years. But when you look ahead and you look ahead at where things are going, um, you know, a lot of the arguments made for why Bitcoin is going to be the one that's won out is just because of the fact that it, it has won out to date. But there are a lot of limitations that Bitcoin has. There are uh, you know, hundreds of people, developers, businessmen, technologists, cryptocurrency enthusiasts that have been working to, to poke holes at Bitcoin. And the developers have gone and they've tried to implement um, a lot of the changes that have been introduced to the Bitcoin protocol, and, which has been fantastic. But at the same time, there's a limit to that. There are certain developments and, and uh, improvements to the technology that can't be integrated into the Bitcoin protocol and, and that can't be made up for in the distribution of the current, uh, the current holders of Bitcoin from the beginning because of uh, coming at it from an earlier, uh, just coming across Bitcoins slightly earlier than the, the rest of the early adopters. Um, so, you know, that being said, I just really like to, uh, you know, take the position that uh, all coins are here to stay. Um, I see them increasing in prominence, um, and I'm very excited about all the innovations coming. So uh, I'm not <laughs> sure if we do have, we have questions <laughs> now. Or, <laughs> um, so uh, I, I guess I'll, I'll rebut, and then you rebut, and then we sure. go to questions. Um, sure. So uh, that I, I agree that all coins are here to stay. That's kind of the, the notion of a, of a cryptocurrency, is as long as there's a single miner working on it, the thing, damn thing's not going to go away. <laughs> so, uh, but I think the question is, is anyone going to use them? Because <laughs> just because they're still alive uh, doesn't mean that they, they're, they're capturing hearts and minds. And uh, I, I don't see something achieving uh, the, the same market depth, the, the same in terms of user adoption, in terms of sort of momentum behind it, as Bitcoin did, as it relates to being used as a store of value. Because um, I, I really think that you know, when, when Bitcoin came about, we argued it's a store of value. And obviously, something that appreciates 9,000% per year is an investment, not a store of value. But if you really look at the way that it handles transactions and the way that it is deflationary, I really think that once this market matures to the point where it's no longer growing at a logarithmic rate, that there will not be a system superior to Bitcoin, that the value proposition in Bitcoin is its market depth, which just increases, sorry, it's, 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 it's market cap, excuse me. And, and that, you know, the larger that gets, the less volatility there is. And I don't think there could ever be an altcoin that could compete on Bitcoin on volatility, especially if the damn thing goes to, you know, a trillion dollars. Sure. Um. So we did once have uh, quite a few stores of value that no longer list that no, that no longer exist today. Um, you know, the Roman Empire had their own coins. There were previous coins before that. Uh, there have been other implementations. The the British pound was the strongest currency at one point in the world. The U.S. dollar is the strongest currency today. Um, the same way that throughout history there hasn't been one uh, currency, one fiat currency that's won out, and there hasn't. Um, you know, I, I don't believe that. Just because Bitcoin is the first digital currency that has managed to have um, a, a modicum of success up till now, uh, that that means it's going to be the only one that wins out. I mean, there's no, you know, the, the world, there are some, some people that like to believe that, you know, we're moving towards a, uh, a society where we're, we're going to live under one nation, one language, a uh, universal language, and have one currency, potentially a digital currency that wins out. But for the foreseeable future, uh, if you look at the diversity of the world, it's very, very unlikely that that happens. Um, and what's more likely to happen is that we continue to see something exists. And when a newer, better technology comes along, whether it's five years down the line, 10 years down the line, uh, or one year down the line, that replaces that. And it, so it eats away at its market share until people realize, actually, you know what? We were wrong. This is the better technology. Right. And, and that happened in, you know, it happens in, Hardware, it happens in software. If you look at uh, hardware, there was a time when, uh, in not so distant past, that BlackBerry was the most successful uh, phone company on the planet. And nobody thought that people were going to use anything except BlackBerry and anything except no BlackBerry at the high end and Nokia at the low end. And if you look at who the most successful phone companies are today, BlackBerry is out of that discussion. Right. Right? I mean, if you look at the, the innovation in, in open source technologies, like with Linux, all the, all the excitement pretty much came in the run up from 0 0.9 to 1.0. And we just so happen to be in the age of Bitcoin, going from 0 0.9 to 1.0. So I really think this is the, this is the year, this is the, the two-year time frame to which Bitcoin is really going to make it. And when you talk about, you know, there are some fundamental things that Bitcoin can't do that an altcoin might be able to come back and do. You know, Adam Back, the creator of Hashcash, which is sort of the idea of hashing, mining for Bitcoins came from, uh, he said, he had this idea of, you know what, if we ever need to do a fundamental overhaul of Bitcoin, we could essentially just have a Bitcoin 2.0 
and then use, uh, what is it, uh, to use proof of burn to then transition into the system. Um, and that would be a nice transitory way to transition to Bitcoin's 2.0 sort of incarnation. So I, I do think that if there ever is such a fundamental technology that it's able to attack Bitcoin as a superior store of value, um, that Bitcoin itself could just do a hard fork and transition, I guess you, you could say, fork itself into an altcoin that you know, is canon um, and, and take whatever you know, proposition that is. Because fundamentally, the, the market share of what is Bitcoin is just so high that uh, you know, it, it's like uh, whatever it is that exists will still be called Bitcoin in the same way that Newsweek died and some cockroaches infested it and still call themselves Newsweek. I think uh, so, I think Bitcoin will still be around. So can uh, can Bitcoin? Uh, sorry, can Bitcoin fork itself into a Turing complete language? <laughs> he says that because I work for Ethereum. Um, <laughs> I, that's there's no reason why they can't. The only impetus to, to making that happen would be anyone actually incentivized to program it, and it doesn't seem like the hundred people who constitute the coders of Bitcoin have any intention of doing that. Sure. Uh, so yeah, so and I guess just another point um, that was brought up earlier by Danny at BitShares was you know this this concept of how he uh, he was referring to what David Johnson had said about uh, Bitcoin not having a, a board of directors, but in actuality you could view the uh, the mining pools as being the board of directors. Um, you know, as we're seeing this movement from you know Bitcoin 1.0 to 2.0, 3.0, and all of these new um, altcoins be introduced with uh, incredible new features, what we're seeing is you know. If Bitcoin isn't as decentralized as it's made out to be, you know, and uh, as we move forward, there is a significant chance that something, you know, someone who truly creates uh, a system, a coin, um, whatever it may be, a platform that that maintains its uh, aspect of being a decentralized platform can win out in the long run. Right. Well, in the long run, sort of a vague statement. I agree that as anything approaches infinity, certainty can be thrown out the window, but. Um, I really don't see Bitcoin being supplanted as the preeminent currency for the next 10, 15 years. I really think that for what it is, which fundamentally is a store of value, that that, that proposition will always be there um, and that it's just going to grow. It's not going to diminish. I think that if you do want to compete with Bitcoin, it's not by just taking the code and forking a new distribution model on top of what Bitcoin is or making the, the confirmation times any faster. I think the fundamental innovation has to be you use the blockchain idea in a unique and, and, and interesting way. Um, and you know, something that I like to say is like, let there be price. That the, the most amazing thing that cryptocurrencies do is they take a market to which there is no price discovery and create a mechanism for discovering price that cannot be shut down. So when we're looking at what cryptocurrencies can do and specifically what altcoins can do, entire industries can come online. Because once you have price discovery, you can have action. Because everything that is associated with the cost, both in terms of risks and in terms of onus on doing that action, is incorporated into that price. And you can actually build entire industries on that. That's the type of innovation that I think altcoins should do. And the vast majority of the 300 that exist are just saying, hey, we have you know, 100 billion units rather than 21. Or hey, we have you know, three second confirmation times rather than 10 minutes. Look at this amazing innovation. Sure. Um, OK, so actually, uh, I think on that, if, if anybody didn't notice, we actually have uh, an invisible person sitting here representing US dollars. And they, they haven't been very vocal well, during they, the they debate. they actually here. It's by fiat. Yeah. So if all of you could just put your faith into it. Teddy, I hope it's not you. <laughs> I love dollars. Um, so should, uh, should we open it up and see if the audience has any uh, questions you want to throw one of our way? Uh, yes. So um, do you see any cooperation between all our, our tangible benefits where both, can, both ecosystems can benefit from each other? Yeah. And this question is open to both. Of you. Right. So, so the question was with regards to benefits uh, mutually from Bitcoin and altcoins at large. Uh, I, I think that is completely possible. I mean, when we're talking about an open source competitive market, uh, we're, you know, you're not competing against your competitors, you're competing against the best of yourself, because the greatest thing that you will ever do will be immediately stolen by your competitors and forked. You know, I, I like to say, you know, the, you know there, there's so many alts of Bitcoin because just how much community buy-in and value proposition there really is behind this idea of Bitcoin, there's a reason there hasn't been a single fork of Ripple. Um, <laughs> but um, I, I really think that you know, it's an open source community, so everyone's the better for different implementations. And altcoins are great, especially when they're direct, directly trying to be superior forms of, of stores of value, because they're, they're hotbeds of experimentation. 
I mean, uh, there was that altcoin not so long ago that was the first one to have a successful 51% attack, and it was fascinating to see how an ecosystem would actually deal with that. So I, I think um, it's for being vectors of easy attacks. They're, they help us in making Bitcoin even more robust. So just, just to add on some of the cooperation, I mean, we've seen with uh, announced by Litecoin and, and Dogecoin doing um, sort of cooperative mining and allowing for things like that, and that's just one step towards that. And I think what we'll uh, eventually start to see is that you know, uh, people are, I, I think a after this big run up where we've seen a number, a couple hundred altcoins get developed, we'll start to see some of that developer talent come together and kind of cooperate on the next version of it, the next implementation. And as they kind of regroup, think about all the best ideas that have happened, think about a couple new ideas they want to um, incorporate into that, and they'll cooperate in that way by introducing a, a newer, better version. Um, the other thing I sort of, you know, just to bring up as well, uh, I mean, the Bitcoin community and, and buying so far globally, is, I should estimate the number somewhere between five and 10 million people, right? The same way that uh, Aurora coin, Isra coin, Spain coin, some of these national coins have come out and right off the bat have the chance to have more significant buy-in from day one. Uh, you know, one of the potential things that could uh, allow for an altcoin to really come out and, and achieve more significant buy-in from day one than what Bitcoin has achieved over the last five years, uh, there could be, you know, because of the way technology is now and, you know, everyone running around with a mobile phone, there could be a coin that comes out that's mobile only, right, the same way that WhatsApp came out. And, and there could be a coin that from day one gets to 25 million people or 100 million or 500 million. So is there any other question? Questions? Yes. OK, so uh, we've never seen this before. And uh, we're talking about a, uh, a successful coin. Uh, so you know, to both of you, what would a successful uh, coin look like then? If you're saying that, I guess, um, in the five years, you can't really say that Bitcoin has one. It's only been five years. So what would you describe, I guess, a successful ecosystem? Um, well, I, I think a successful coin is anything that has market adoption. I, I, I'm entrepreneurially minded. so. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm all focused on the value proposition behind it and then how many people are engaged in using that value proposition. I consider that success. So if you have something incredibly niche and the purpose is just to service 1,000 people and you have 1,000 people using it, I think that's a success. But um, where I think that you know, we, we trend towards the, the BS realm when it comes to altcoins is, as I said before, when there's, there is no new niche that it's fulfilling. It's just something to which is, is, is completely derivative with just a minor tweak. So the things that sort of make me extremely excited are uh, the, the, as I said before, like storage or, or bit message or name coin. These are ideas that take the blockchain idea and put it into a totally new space. I mean, when we're talking about this idea of distributed arbitration, like there is so much that can be done with that. There's so much untapped potential in that of anything that we could possibly think of that could be applied to. Um, that to just be something that's completely derivative and not use that in a more novel way is, is just, I'm like, why? <laughs> you know, it's like, it's like uh, looking at Lindsay Lohan and saying, if you only didn't do drugs, you'd be here, not here. Um, I'm sorry, I, I just, I, I'm, a, I'm a glutton for pain. Um, so it's just, it's seeing potential and seeing it squandered. It's, I, I guess the reason that, that altcoins hurt my soul when they're derivative is I see the talent in the people behind them and I ask why they couldn't be more ambitious, why they couldn't have just reached for a little more, or, or why they couldn't have just been a little more experimental with the thing that they were trying to achieve. And it, it's sort of a, it's, it's, it's a pain through love, I guess is what you could say, you know what I mean? Uh, that's sort of where I come from that as someone who's like a, a Bitcoin believer. Guys, if you could uh, give us sort of a wrap up statement, a minute, two, three, four, whatever it is. But if you could wrap it up, right um, what you've seen, what you've been through, where you see this going, and then uh, we're going to wrap up the first ever cryptocurrency convention. Sure. Uh, do you want to start? Or? No, I, I've been talking too much. <laughs> All right. So I guess you know I'll also answer that question at the, to finish it up too. Yeah. I mean, I, listen. I think that. Clearly, the fact that we're all here today to celebrate the first ever cryptocurrency convention, focus on altcoins and everything that's been developed, you know, at, at, which follows and kind of wraps up this whole uh, week of Bitcoin so far, um, following the inside of Bitcoin's conference, it really shows that altcoins matter. They're here today. They're, they have succeeded, right? The idea, you know, we've gotten past the point where it's, you know, we live in this one digital currency world utopia that Bitcoin is the first thing that came out. Let's 
tailor everything, table every other good idea that comes up and focus on developing the ecosystem around Bitcoin. Because, you know, not many people discuss it, but one of the things that's great about the Bitcoin ecosystem is it shows it, it validates digital currency, it validates this view of where the world can go uh, based on, you know, how far we've come to date. But the ecosystem is very flexible. You know, most of the companies today, uh, you know, in my opinion, have made a mistake by including Bitcoin or bit something, bit whatever into their names. Because when I look at it, and what really gets me excited about this is the world that we come from, you know, and I, I'm focused on the financial sector, so it's really, we're coming from a world of traditional finance, and we're moving into a world of Bitcoin and digital assets and digital finance. And, you know, extending that to all of the different projects and all the things in the ecosystem, all these companies that today are focused on Bitcoin have the technological capacity to easily flex, uh, you know, and, and uh, Make, a, make an easy change and, and become a digital currency company, a digital currency um, payment provider, a digital currency exchange, a digital currency whatever. And, and I think that it, Bitcoin has been tremendously important in the fact that it has gotten us to where we are now. And, and now it's in everyone else's hands here to, in the altcoin and cryptocurrency community, to take it further and, and to take it the next five, ten years from here. Um, I, I agree with what you said. Um, you know, I would like to reframe the discussion, which I guess is a cheat because it's uh, restructuring <laughs> the argument. But um, I, I think altcoin shouldn't be called altcoins. Again, I, I think the fundamental innovation is the blockchain. So what we're talking about are alternative ways to implement this idea called the blockchain. And I think that the idea of currency has been solved, uh, that Bitcoin does it. It does it pretty damn well. And that if you're implementing it, maybe restructuring it not as a coin, maybe calling it a token, as MasterCoin likes to call all the projects that they use, or, or, or structuring it as something else would make more sense, because I, I do think that the conversation on currency has a pretty strong competitor in it that I think there may be a long tail for, but you'll never beat Coke or Pepsi. Um, but I do think that applying the blockchain to all these other sorts of ideas it would be great. But it wouldn't be a cryptocurrency, it would be a, a blockchain something or another. But you know, that's a time for someone else to come up with a better word for that. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.